Hey, Thomas here with the Artisan Sound Channel and I have another video for you that starts out here with a little live camera shot. Now this one is the X32 producer. It's a slightly smaller version of the X32 that we're using uh, in the theater. Uh, but I have this here set up at my home studio and uh, I wanted to ask uh, answer a question in this video that was um, posted on one of my other videos. And that is to see if I can show how to set up the connections for MIDI uh, and how to set everything up so that the Behringer X32 can actually receive the uh, MIDI control messages that we're sending from QLab, okay? So one reason why I'm doing this here at home and not in the theater is that it's convenient for me to walk behind the console so I can show you the connections and what's going on here. Let me lift this up a little bit so it focuses, right? All right. So here, this is how I how you want to set up. Um, there are actually a couple of different methods um, on how to get MIDI signals in and out. But I prefer, and there's also a couple of different methods to, of getting audio signal in and out, but I prefer to use the um, built-in uh, USB card interface, audio interface USB card, um, to use that for both getting audio in and out of the computer, as well as getting MIDI in and out of the computer. So you can cover that both with this connection alone. The alternative would be right over here, you see MIDI in and out. You can also just uh, hook up standard MIDI connectors on that and just then you have to use a MIDI interface uh, to, to create the physical connection. All right, so, but um, I'm running both the audio and the MIDI through the X USB, um, I mean X32 USB audio interface card. Okay, so then I'll show you how to set up the settings. You go to setup and the, these buttons are laid out just a little bit differently because the real estate here on the board is a little smaller on the X32 producer than on the bigger board, but it's all in the setup menu. So you, you find the setup button and then in the setup button, you see the different tabs there. It starts with global and then you come over to remote and here is where you set up the MIDI control interface. You see right here, you have to select card MIDI. Uh, if you select MIDI in out, that reads input and output from the MIDI connectors that I showed you. And when you select card MIDI, it gets MIDI in and out from the card. And you can also select both. Those are just check boxes, not radio buttons. Um, but I'm not, I don't have anything hooked up to the MIDI in out. So I'm just, selecting card MIDI here. And then you can, you, you have to set up the specific filters of what type of messages you want to, you want the board to recognize. And I just selected everything that I might possibly send, be sending. Uh, so it's program change, fader positions as control, um, control command, channel mute as control command and channel pan as control command. Um, you can also use MIDI SysX. I don't like that very much because it's not a very easy, it's not a parameter that is very easy to configure when you're sending it. So I just, I'm not selecting that. Now you can also select MIDI transmit. I'm not sending any messages from the board, from the uh, X32 uh, into QLab but that could be set up that way as well. I'm just not using it this way, but if you wanted to do that, um, these settings are here as well. Okay, so now let's uh, complete the setup here with uh, MIDI transfer connections uh, between QLab and the X32 board. Um, I'm in here in QLab now, and there are two things you need to do here. Number one, you go to the window menu, and you select workplace uh, workspace settings, and here you can see there's a, there are different sections here. There's an audio section, and here's a MIDI section. So in the MIDI section, um, 
Up here are the output patch assignments for MIDI queues. So here's where you want to go ahead and select the X USB MIDI port as a patch. All right, so we're just setting patch number one to X USB, and then we're gonna close this. And now I'm selecting one of the MIDI queues right here. And I'm gonna take a look at the settings, the settings tab for this selected queue. And so what I have here right now is I have patch five selected for some reason. I wonder if that is inherited from how it is set up at the theater. And uh, I have a feeling that might be the case. Let me double check and look at another one. Here's also number five, patch number five is selected. So it doesn't really matter a terrible amount, but since this is all seems like it's it's all on channel five from what's been set up in the theater. And I want to change this. And so instead of changing all of them, which is not a huge deal either, but I just want to make it compatible so that my setup here at home matches what we have set up in uh, in the theater. And so I'm just going to go back to the uh, patch settings here, workspace settings. And I'm going to also set patch five to X USB. It doesn't really matter. You can leave that in here or... You know, it might be set up to something different. Those workspace settings are specific to each um, QLab workspace. So it doesn't get transferred from one um, file to another anyway. So this is probably the best thing to do this, the best way to do this. All right, let's see. So there's one here that is still has, still has an, an, a red X. Let's see what the reason is for that. So for some strange reason, this one has uh, channel two, selected or patch two selected. I'm just going to switch this to patch five. And there are a few others here. So it looks like there are some inconsistencies. Maybe that's because um, I've already had this uh, open on different computers and maybe something got messed up. Um, so we can simply fix it. Let me show you. Um, so here's an interesting way to have multiple queues selected at the same time, you can click uh, Command F for find, and then you can here um, use a keyword that is part of all queues that you might wanna change. So it has found 70. So if I hit select found here, it selects all of them. And now when I make a change down here, I can change the MIDI destination. It seems like they're already all set to five. So that doesn't really fix anything, it seems like. Yeah, so the DCA groups um, and the mutes, some of them are the ones that are still kind of orphans. So, all right, fine. Then let me go to just change this here to DCA. See, now I have 41 found, so I'm just going to select those. And see, now I have mixed over here, mixed uh, mixed destination. So here I'm gonna just select USB five and the command is mixed, that's fine. That's supposed to be like that. So that's good. I'm not gonna change that. And that takes care of all the DCA commands. And then if I also want to take care of all the mute commands and I'm selecting all of them and now they're already all set to five. Okay, so the DCA events were the culprits. Okay, so that's an easy way to just mass select a whole bunch of them. And, um, and then you click done at the end and they're all unselected. And you see now all of my MIDI events are now valid. So that's awesome. Um, all right, so that's basically it. That's the, the, MIDI, sec um, uh, the, the MIDI routing. So again, you have to set it up in, in the workspace settings window. You go to the MIDI patch here, to the MIDI section, and then you define one of the patches or multiple patches up here uh, to the X USB. And then you just select that patch as a MIDI destination for all events that you want to set to the X32, okay? And while we're here, let me also show you the way that um, this also works the same way with the sound. So you go back again to Window Workspace Settings, and uh, this time you go to we're going to go to the audio. You see here are my setups. So this doesn't doesn't uh, apply down here. This is for mic cues. That's different. 
we're talking about audio cues here and you have i have here my two um patches already configured as the speakers internal speakers of this mac and then zoom audio device that's what i'm using when i'm recording uh, these videos and i'm capturing the sound um that is that you hear so that you can hear it from the qlab session or qlab workspace and so i'm just going to set this up to show you as a third patch here i'm just going to define x usb as the third patch and i'm going to close this and now when i select an audio cue and i go to the um audio level section here is where you select the audio output patch and here is now my x usb output right here so with the x usb outputs the interesting thing is you can set this up on the card level of um, the settings inside the x32 in such a way that you can actually configure multiple channels um, not just two this is not just a stereo connection this is actually uh, this actually allows you to set up up to 32 channels of audio uh, that go straight across between your computer and uh, the x32 board so we're using this for one thing let me show you oh, it's not notes i'm going to look for find here i'm going to look for thunder because there are some cues that have thunder in them um all right so here's a thunder okay i can hear the music cue playing through the um through the x32 console and if i do that same thing here with the thunder cue that should actually work oh it doesn't work all right that's because in the studio i have already configured this the way i was just going to show you all right so what happens here is um you can see here there are 10 faders and that's just kind of like a default setting this has nothing to do with how the card is actually set up but we have set up the card in the theater so that the first four channels uh, of the card are routed to the aux one through four and we're using the first two channels for music and the second pair for sound effects and so what you do is you see normally when you have a music cue it is set so that um, these two cross points here, they're called cross points, and these are levels. So levels are actually referring to fader levels. Um, and what this does is it sets the zero, that, that means the full level, the full zero dot level uh, of the music. So that's kind of just the, the standard level. And when I want to go to um, um, a sound effects queue, See, now, here in this one, I, I write this down to all the way to nothing. Uh, actually, I'm just going to delete the value. So that's the fastest way to do that there, to delete these values from, from these fields and then just enter manually enter zero into these two fields. And now this sound effect is set so that it will play out of uh, the channels three and four which show up on the board on the console as aux three and four all right so and why are we doing it this way well because there's a lot of times often it's uh the case that you have sound effects that are not mixed in with the music but they're playing at the same time as there is music playing either at the beginning of music or during the music or whatever but you don't want to have that um affect each other right you want to be able to control the mix of the volume of the music independently of the volume of the sound effects and the only way to do that is to have the sound effects come up on different faders on the on the console uh than the music and so that's how you do that and it's really cool that you can do that all with uh, the same um the same usb connection that that unlocks you know all of these channels in the card and then you have to set it up on the board so that the card inputs are mapped to the aux fader so that you can grab them from there all right okay i think that's all for this video uh thanks for watching let me know if you have any other questions give us a like on this video if you like it and um, leave a comment if you enjoyed it 
maybe share it with someone who might also be interested. And if you never want to miss a video that we're posting, um, go ahead and subscribe and enable notifications so that we can let you know when a new video is posted on the Artisan Sound channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Again, this is Thomas signing off.